welcome back to my channel it's jock and today is going to be a really 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 good day uh because it's actually something that um i'm well versed in and by the title you know today we are talking about visa processes if you're wanting to leave america if you're wanting to stay in another country and for how long can you stay a lot of people have asked me a lot of questions uh, big shout out to Tim. Uh, because of Tim, we had a conversation that was on the internet yesterday on Facebook uh, about my last video, Idols. And he was telling me that I was one of the first people that he personally knew that lived abroad. He has always wanted to live in South Africa or Africa in general and that he just didn't know the processes of actually doing these. So that prompted me to think, what type of video could I make that could educate everyone on things that I'm actually already accustomed to? I've actually been through this process many, many times now from the UK to Spain and now in Mexico. And the information that I wanna give out is the information that I researched myself, is the information I went off, and I'm still learning about these processes. They do get a little more intricate, a little more detailed as you wanna go. But I also wanna tell everyone that this process is not difficult. It is not difficult at all, especially, uh, let's say, take myself for example. When I moved to the UK, I had two credit cards with $20,000 each on them and I also had a savings account with some money in it as well. Um, for me, I wasn't going to spend a lot of money. I had already traveled to this country a few times. I knew the kind of area I wanted to live in and what my bills were actually going to look like. Um, with that being said, I knew that from like here, here right here is the rules of how long I could stay in the UK without a visa process, like or without going through the process, which is essentially a six months within a, a, a calendar year. So I can stay 180 days or six months in a calendar year. And that's initially what I did. I did that initially because I said, I don't know if I'm gonna like it here. Let me not shove out all this money for processing and visas. Let me stay for six months and then I'll see if I'm going to go through the visa process. Because of that, it was much more easier for me to get there, get my footing in, and then understand, oh, oh man, I think I like this country, I think I'm going to stay. Luckily for me at the time, uh, we were going through a pandemic. So with us going through a pandemic, my uh, visitor visa was not valid at all. So it didn't stop until the pandemic was over, which allowed me to stay within the country for I think approximately, it was uh, over a little bit over a year and a half without actually doing my visa process. Um, so that's why that was very important what you're seeing. When you're wanting to visit these countries, if you're not wanting to stay a long time, that power of the American passport is, it's very powerful. You can stay in some of these places for the exact amount of time uh, that you want to. So if it's for six months only, sometimes you don't have to go through the visa process at all. It just means that you can't work at that work in that country and it means that you can't collect money in that country. You can use your own money to live in that country and you can even, you know, rent an Airbnb for six months, but you can be in that country legally for six months. After six months is when you jump into immigration problems. When you're talking about how much money you need when you're going to these countries, I usually tell everybody this, go into the converter app and try to figure out what your money is compared to theirs. If you're getting a big rate, like say for instance, in Colombia, my dollar is going to stretch much farther than it would in the UK or that it would stretch in, the, in Europe because the dollar and euro is more and a pound is more than the dollar. But if you're thinking about places maybe like uh, South Africa or Africa in general, sometimes your dollar may stretch a little bit further. Latin America, also your um, dollar may stretch a lot further. My dollar does stretch a little bit further here in Mexico than it would stretch in Europe. So what I pay for my apartment here, this apartment probably in, in Europe or in Barcelona, 
would probably be a maybe a 3,000 euro type of apartment. But because I'm in Mexico, it's not that expensive. been times where I have used my visa, my visiting visa, and I've also went to other countries in that way. And a lot of times what people don't understand is when you're going to different countries outside of, say for instance, I think it's Shizen, it's called the Shizen um, region, which is Europe, basically it's part of like this Europe region. If I was to ever leave that region and go to the UK, which is not a part of that region, my visa immediately starts over in some places. You have to pay attention to those rules. So when you're seeing things that say six months period in a calendar year, that means you can only stay there in six months within one year. So whether you stay three months here and three months there, two months here, two months there, two months here, it's still only six months in that calendar year. You have others that have a re-entry. So upon re-entry, it means uh, every time you leave and come back, it starts over. And those are places, I believe that uh, Latin America, you have that a lot. Uh, you, for instance, like Colombia, Bogota, uh, Argentina is not one. Argentina, you only can stay in Argentina for three months at a time. Um, and Mexico is not one as well. Mexico, you can leave and re-enter um, as long as there's some gap and some distance between what you're actually trying to do. But you have to leave. You're not allowed to just stay, stay, stay. And that's one thing that I want you guys to understand. When it, uh, that's very important. When you're talking about the borders, you even if it's a day, even if it's uh, a couple of hours, a couple of hours, they may let you get past with it. But when it comes to things like uh, months and things like that, unless something like catastrophic has happened, like COVID, uh, they're really not going to be very lenient. You're either going to get fined or you're going to get banned from that country. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to the stamps that are in your passport um, or the, your entry and exit date. So you always want to make sure. Uh, and this is actually for uh, a good friend of mine, Tim. If you're wanting to go to Africa, there is a six month period that you can stay in Africa. But the thing is, when you, you need to make sure that one, that you have the vaccines, you need to make sure that you also have a very safe, secure place to stay. Um, but you need to understand that say, uh, sometimes they don't give you a stamp. Sometimes that, that date is solely up to you and only for you. And I tell everybody else that when it came to me going to Barcelona, everybody else know that I was actually on a fiance visa. So it was much easier because my fiance at the time was a resident or uh, a resident of Spain and also born and raised in Spain. So it was a little bit easier when it came to uh, me moving to Spain. I will put that in a different video about the processes of a fiance visa. Um, when you're going from either America or you're going to Spain, that's just my uh, connection with it. Um, when it comes to uh, other things that you need, you just need to make sure that the country also does accept the credit cards or the, 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 the form of payment that you're going to use. I personally use American Express um, and with me using American Express, there I had zero problems in Europe, zero problems in the UK, but here in Mexico, they do not accept American Express everywhere. Um, or say for instance, with me paying with my phone. I'm used to paying only with my phone, but here I have to always have my American Express card with me. Um, I can pay with my Visa card and anything else that I have, that's fine. But when it comes to American Express, um, also I would think or check, I had this big issue with myself when I came to Mexico. I was not used to carrying cash. In Europe, we don't carry a lot of cash. We usually pay with a lot of cards and that was it. In Mexico, it's more very chill, very relaxed vibe. They're not really into the whole credit card type of thing. And with that being said, uh, you have to take cash out often. I usually take out anywhere from a uh, hundred dollars per week And that lashes me for the entire week of like little things I need to get from the market meats Veggies things like that unless I want to go to a place like Walmart or Soriana, Comer, La Comer, and then it's a little bit different um, 
And that's just something that's very important. I would think that uh, you always have to make sure that you have enough cash and that you can buy the things that you need to buy. Uh, last but not least, this is a very important part for anybody wanting to leave or travel to another country for months at a time. Please always research where the embassy is. It's not for a safety thing, but if anything can happen, you can lose your passport, your passport can rip, anything. And you want to make sure that you know the rules for when it's time to leave. I have definitely had to renew my passport before only one time, uh, which was a very easy process. I renewed it in Barcelona. I went to the embassy suite. I mean the embassy suite. I went to the embassy uh, and they gave me my passport the same day. I had the old one. They gave me the new one. It was no problem at all. And that was really, really, really easy. Um, I think I'm going to make a couple more videos about this process of living in a different country and how it works and what really goes into doing it. But today I wanted to talk about just how easy it is to get a visa. And these visas aren't needed, by the way, I want to add that. Visas, you don't have to apply for these. These come naturally with your, your passport. So you don't have to do anything for these. You don't have to sign any paperwork. This is just what comes with having an American passport. Um, so, and that's gonna actually be my next video is the application process of getting a passport for those that do not have them. So I will make sure that we get these videos out to you guys. Again, if you have any questions, any concerns, please drop a comment and let me know what I can make a video about to help you either go to another country or the things that I know about you going and staying in a certain country. Okay, until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys dearly. Ciao.